I am here in the nearly deserted corridor of the UCSB library to show you something of an exhibit that I created along with Museum Studies student Rhiannon Gonzalez. It's called The Creative Edge of Collecting, The Nothing of William Davies King. I am William Davies King, a professor at this university, and this exhibit is meant to represent a portion of the many collections I have that I have called nothing. In 2008, I published this book, Collections of Nothing, which tells the story partly as a memoir, partly as an essay about collecting, of how one comes to be a collector of things of no particular value that I call nothing. This first cabinet contains collections which are more or less just accumulations of things, such as these theater and movie tickets, which I've accumulated for decades now, Netflix flaps, These two cabinets contain my card collection, business cards, credit cards, hotel door cards, gift cards, and that sort of thing. Something like 10,000. My bottle cap collection, beer bottles and all sorts of other kinds of bottles too. We've created a little bit of a river here to show the flow of bottle cap collecting. This is the first of three panels showing my kitchen collection. I started this in about 1998 and it was initially just a way of keeping hold of all the little stickers you find on pieces of fruit and vegetables and the little things you find in junk mail. Truly ephemeral stuff. I call it the kitchen collection because I set up two frames to the right and left of my kitchen sink and as things would come along, I would just apply them. When a page gets full, take it out, put it into a binder. The second cabinet, in addition to continuing the beer bottle river, contains things that have a little bit more of a collage aspect and more of a collecting, such as I had this gadget, which is an old address book with an alphabetizing key on the top. And I had to think about what to put into it, and I finally decided that I would accumulate um, product trademarks in alphabetical order when I finished filling this box, I decided not to continue that collecting because it was driving me a little crazy. This is my envelope lining collection, security seals, the kind of things you have inside an envelope to prevent people from reading your check. One of the earliest forms of collecting I did was just find interesting old pieces of metal that I enjoyed and treated like pieces of sculpture. I have just a few of these now. Eventually I decided that it was much better to have something lightweight and not bulky like that as a collecting. This, uh, the largest collection of all, is the collection of product labels. Uh, and I have 2,500 cereal boxes, etc. What I put into this exhibit is just this binder full of all the fresh blueberry labels. More of the kitchen collection here. The third cabinet represents things that are, again, moving more in the direction of collage. This is my water label collection. I had this wonderful old ledger book 
and I decided to fill it with uh, the plastic water bottle labels that are so prevalent now. This phenomenon of selling water goes back to, well, just about 1990 in the extreme way it's, it is now. So I have pretty much the entire history of that phenomenon here in this book. This is what you might call a scrapbook. I call it the Anomalous Atlas of Law. It was initially a National Geographic atlas, a binder really, for you to put together the maps that came in the monthly National Geographic magazine. And I decided to turn the maps into flags and use the back of the maps as a different kind of map, kind of an internal map of some of my, I don't know, preoccupations, I guess you'd say. This is the purest, I think, of all my collections of nothing. I was given a stamp collection when I was a kid, and I initially thought this was wonderful, and I labored over putting all the stamps in the right place. But eventually I realized how much anxiety goes into stamp collecting not having a particular stamp. So I put it on the shelf and left it for nothing for years, but eventually I came back to it and started putting into it all these little place stamp here squares that you find on envelopes. So really this is the collection of a lack of a stamp, a collection of something that's very clearly nothing, and yet look at the variety of different ways you can ask for a stamp. <clears throat> I had this wonderful old lab notebook and I had to decide what to put into it. I had been accumulating old dictionaries because I liked the illustrations that appear in those things, and I decided to create a sort of pseudo-dictionary, images only. So this book is sort of a dictionary of no words but just images, and I created it with a sort of semi-alphabetized form. more of the kitchen collection. These are the more recent ones. I've really enjoyed the stickers that you find on stop signs and telephone poles, band stickers and all sorts of things. I don't even know what they are, but I scraped them off the sign and put them into my collection. This cabinet shows examples of something that moves beyond collecting, really beyond that creative edge of just collecting into collage. I invented for myself this form of collage where I take old books, which I'd always been collecting, and I repurpose them as a different kind of uh, book by putting collage material. This book was called Big Farmer, and it was a children's book about an unnaturally large farmer. Actually, glued to the front of it was a small book that was called Little Farmer. That was gone by the time I uh, acquired this book. But I repurposed it by putting images of classic images of the Bible from Renaissance art and so on into it to make it into Big Farmer, Big Jesus. This book was a colorful book of photographs of Cuba, and I added to it children's book images of, from the Bible and um, also American product uh, trademarks, little figurines to represent American products. And I figured two forms of invasion of Cuba This is a book that was of paintings of Vermeer, and I've put into it images from the artist Carol Feuermann, who works with uh, resin images of swimmers very typically.
This is one of my stranger books. It was originally a book about uh, 19th century circuses and sideshows and that sort of thing called Wild, Weird, and Wonderful. I turned it into the diagnosis of weird, wild, weird, and wonderful nervous diseases by putting in medical book images of uh, nervous diseases along with images from Saul Steinberg and other children's book illustrators. Condoleezza Rice Liberace. This is a book about Norman Rockwell's paintings called The Faith of America. And I put into it images of the Soviet Union, Vladimir Putin on the front here. So this is taking, collecting beyond the accumulation of things into something that is a work of art. So that's it. Thank you for looking in. We hope this exhibit will be open to be seen again, perhaps in the summer, perhaps in the fall. If you're interested in the work, have a look at my website, williamdaviesking.com. And thank you.